Now we begin K13, and K13 is the very last block of the 11th row of the quilt. Two rows left after this. This is a very basic construction. You notice that it is a modified block. The only modification is that they have um, made this be one piece. So you have a nine patch in the center. You're going to assemble the three rows and then connect the block. And then you have flying geese units on the side. And so I'm going to assemble this as a unit and then attach it to my center. Assemble this as a unit and I will have this three all connected in one row. Then I will baste my square, assemble my flying geese unit, baste my square, make this row do the same thing up here, and then assemble the block. So I have them all laid out over here. I have a stripe fabric for my focus fabric on this one and I have a directional background. So I've marked my directional on my background and on my focus fabric. And um, my basting, I'm gonna baste the white squares one way. I'm gonna do one first and then the other and I'm gonna do the opposite on the focus fabric. This helps keep it as tight as possible because if you have a double fold against a double fold, it's not as accurate. But if you have a double fold against a single fold, then it's better for the accuracy of the finished block. For these, I'm going to baste the legs of the, the, legs of the triangles first, then the hypotenuse makes the tags go away. This one, I'm gonna, these I'm gonna baste the hypotenuse first and then the legs makes the tags go out so it takes them out of play. The squares here, it doesn't matter if I baste opposite sides and then opposite sides either way. So I'm gonna get started here in the middle section with my nine patch. So an interesting thing just happened. I was basting my squares and wanted to get them all basted so that I could just sit and stitch them together. And I came across this here and it didn't make much sense for these to be the same size when they're basted, but this is not. So I didn't have any markings on any of these to, in, to indicate anything. But apparently that there's four that are on the outside corner because this fits this triangle size. So this, there's four bigger ones that, of course, when I was making my blocks, I put them in the right bag and then I went to prep my blocks and, you know, put them on the fabric and made sure all my directions were the same and all that kind of thing. But, uh didn't notice that I would have an issue when it comes to layout. So pay attention to your block sizes here. So I'm going to put my bigger squares in the corners and put the smaller squares in the center. And of course, make sure that the orientation is correct. Now that I've corrected that error, I will be able to assemble my center. All right, so I've basted all my middles and I've made sure that all these are the same size and these are assembled and these are assembled into rows. I have um, directional background with my flowers facing up and then I have a directional stripe. Not only is it a stripe, but it also has an up and a down. So my little flowers, my little leaves go to the top as well. So all of these are, um, I'm checking these all as I go and all of these so far are good. So I just got one more row to assemble. This is taped and then I'll attach this and I'll make this into one big square. So I've got all three of my rows for my center block assembled and all of my fabric is going in the correct direction. So the next section is going to be to um, assemble these flying geese units as I have them basted here. And then I'll be able to attach those together. I'm gonna assemble these and this and attach this to my metal block. So I went to baste my outside triangles and I've got stripes going this way on the top and stripes on the side going in the same direction. But what I noticed is something I did not do on this. Um, on these, I made sure that I had the red on the edge of each square so that it would show where the edge of the square was 
so that you could see the shape and it didn't look strange. What I did not do on these is to make sure that the red was on the edge of this. So what's going to happen is this is going to blend in a bit from a distance because it's close to this color. So when I put the sashing on, it might actually look that the edge of the block is on the red. So if you've got a striped fabric or something, this is something to consider at block prep. So I would like, I should have put my point in the red and my edge in the red if it would have worked out that way. On these, I put my points in the red and the, didn't work out to put a point here in the red, but I did have these in the red. I don't know, I can't remember if that was intentional or not, but I just wanted to add that little note. So I've got my side units all assembled. So this is going to go over here once I flip it. And I have my fabric isn't on the same direction. So I'm going to attach these to each side of my block and then I'll finish the center row and then I'll be able to assemble the bottom and the top rows. So I've got this whole middle section assembled and we've got all of my fabrics going the right direction. So I'm going to set this aside and work on the bottom row that I've got basted. So I'll stick these together and then attach the squares on either side. So I've managed to assemble my bottom row. So I'm going to now attach this to this central row. And then I will be able to assemble my top row and attach it to the center row as well. So now I've got the bottom row attached and I will get onto basting and assembling my top row. Top row is now assembled. So this is just a matter of flipping this over and assembling this top row to this bottom section and I will have a, a done block. Now I have the top row attached to my center and I have a completed K13 block. 